God said, O oh, Iblis, what has prevented thee from prostrating unto that which I created with my two hands? Does thou wax arrogant, or art thou amongst the exalted? What can we apprehend in terms of the two hands of God? Surely the two hands of God can't be literally conceived as having exact similarities to our hands. It is a sort of anthropomorphism that is strictly repudiated by Islamic worldview. But figuratively, can we apprehend those like our hands? Namely, God has the right and the left hand. As a matter of fact, in no way can we truly know what God means about his two hands in respect of his incomparability or his tanzi. Yet God does teach about himself what we can still know in respect of his similarity or his tashbi. Roughly speaking, actually we may imagine God's hands like ours which consists of the right hand and the left hand because the Quran itself establishes about it. The whole earth shall be but a handful to him on the day of resurrection, and the heavens will be enfolded in his right hand. Moreover, the prophet is reported to have said God will grasp the heavens in his right hand, while the earth will be in his other hand. Then he will shake them. The dual form of the word yad, hands, is not often used in the Quran to refer to God's two hands, but it is occasionally used to refer to the right and left hands of both God and humans. The Quran attributes very different qualities to two sides. The Quran many times uses the word yamin which means right side or right hand, making use of some of the words from the same root that are used in Arabic to denote fortune or luck, while the word shimal which means left side or left hand is used several times. This phrase clearly denotes bad fortune. Both of these are explicitly elucidated in the Quran. And the companions of the right, what of the companions of the right? Amongst thornless lot trees, clustered plantains and extended shade, gushing water and abundant fruit, neither out of reach nor forbidden and upon raised beds. Truly we brought them into being as a new creation, then made for them virgins, amorous peace for the companions of the right many from those of old and many from those of later times. And the companions of the left, what of the companions of the left? Amidst scorching wind and boiling liquid and the shadow of black smoke, neither cool nor refreshing. Regarding the two hands God used to create Adam and what their ontological implication and meaning are, we would find out through Ibn Arabi's mystical view of it. Considering the diction the Quran uses to depict the meaning of the left and the right, we can take a further look at what both associate with when alluding to the creation of Adam. In a hadith, it is reported that the Prophet narrated how God created Adam and then told him to choose one of his two hands while holding out both of them closed. Adam said, I choose the right hand of the Lord, though both hands of my Lord are right and blessed. Adam's answer hits the mark but still gives us the vague meaning of God's left hand. It makes us unclear even though Adam said both hands of my Lord are right and blessed, whether or not the left hand of God is unfavorable. According to Adam's choice, we can say the left hand of God is unfavorable, but we should quickly be aware of the very fact that quote unquote, God's mercy precedes his wrath. Thus, though his left hand seems like his wrath, as a matter of ontological fact, his wrath is a mercy. In other words, God's left is in truth right. Therefore, it is imprecise and improper to consider one of God's hand is unfavorable or does not hold mercy inasmuch as the prophet asserts the good, all of it is in thy two hands, while evil does not go back to thee. To put it another way, God has two right hands in relation to himself and the two are in truth right because everything he makes is his will and totally the good. The left hand, however, is God's hand in relation to us because it is associated with the hell and bad fortune. Ibn Arabi says God has two blessed open hands. In other words, within them is mercy. So nothing of chastisement is connected to them.
We go back to the verse in the Quran where God addresses Iblis, O oh, Iblis, what has prevented thee from prostrating unto that which I created with my two hands? Dost thou wax arrogant, or art thou among the exalted? Given the fact that the Quran seldom makes reference to God's two hands using the dual form of the word Yad, we can consider its significance that the reference to it is to stress the special of the creation of Adam. Quotes, the creation of every created thing in the cosmos is attributed to a hand of God. God says of that which our hands have wrought, employing the plural form of hand. Every creative hand in the cosmos is his hand, a hand within his kingdom and under his control. Hence, all of creation belongs to God. Verily, his are the creation and the command. The Hadith literature has mentioned that God planted the tree of Tuba with his hand and created the Garden of Eden with his hand. Here the singular form of hand is employed. God uses the dual form only in the case of the creation of Adam who is a perfect human being. From the first existent thing down to the last of the children, the animals, God did not combine both his hands in anything he created except the human being. That is the human being's earthly and bodily configurations. He created everything else either by divine command or with one hand. From that passage, we can capture that the creation of Adam by the two hands of God indicates Adam's excellent quality or eminence over anything else. Yet we have not known what Ibn Arabi tells about the hands themselves. Ibn Arabi says, God said, What has prevented thee from prostrating unto that which I created with my two hands? Thereby he gave Adam eminence. The context shows that he touched his creature with his two hands in the manner befitting his majesty. That's why he called him a mortal. Hand means power and there is no eminence in that for the one to whom it is given. Hand also means blessing and this is the same since God's blessings and power embrace all existent things. Hence there must be something other than these two attributes that can be understood from two hands. The something must be a quality possessed only by Adam. Strongly highlighting the two hands of God demonstrates the eminence God bestows upon Adam. Ibn Arabi explicitly suggests that eminence is closely connected to the ontological fact that Adam is the divine image or the divine form and he is the one who was taught by God all the names and was given knowledge of all things. Quote, the divine form belongs rightly to Adam only because he was created with the two hands. Hence, all the realities of the cosmos were brought together within him, and the cosmos demands the divine names. Hence, the divine names were brought together within him. That is why Adam was singled out for the knowledge of the names, all of them. That is, all the names that turned their attention toward the cosmos. But God didn't give this knowledge to the angels, though they are the higher, nobler world. God says he taught Adam the names, all of them. He did not say some of them. If you like, the attributes of Adam is the divine presence. If you like, it is the fact that he brings together all the divine names. Or if you like, it is the words of the prophet. God created Adam in his own form. This is Adam's attribute. God brought together his two hands in creating him, so we know that he gave him the attributes of perfection. Hence, he created him perfect and all comprehensive, which is why he receives all the divine names. He brings together the whole cosmos in respect of its realities. He is an independence word, but everything else is a part of the cosmos. When God wanted the perfection of this human configuration, he combined in it his two hands, gave it all the realities of the cosmos and disclosed himself to it in all the names. Hence it gained the divine form and the form of engendered existence. Ibn Arabi was one of those Sufis whose views often contradict or at least seem to contradict not only those of other Sufis but also of his own. Undeniably, we can say that he is the greatest thinker in Islamic history who often seems inconsistent. However, we know inconsistency is a form of completeness, while consistency always indicates incompleteness. Either complete but inconsistent or 
consistent but incomplete, two diametrical arenas, one of which must be taken. Ibn Arabi took the former, never are we able to achieve complete and consistent. In terms of the meaning of the two hands of God that Ibn Arabi has explained to suggest power and blessing, we see in his other passages that Ibn Arabi gives us his other rumination that seems to contradict his own view we quoted a while ago. On the basis of his concern of Tanji and Tashbi, Ibn Arabi elucidates. When servants of Al-Haq witness him, they see him as possessing two relationships, that of incomparability and that of descent to the imagination through a kind of similarity. The relationship of Tanji is his self-manifestation in notes is like unto him. The other relationship is his self-manifestation in the Prophet's words, worship God as if you see him. It is also mentioned in God's words, wherever you turn, there is the face of God. There being an adverb of place where the face of God is his essence and reality. This other relationship is also mentioned in all the hadiths and verses that have come with words along with their meanings that apply to created things. It has been reported concerning the human configuration that God created Adam in his own form. In the Quran, God says that he created him with his two hands since he wanted to point out his eminence. This is shown by the context since he tells Iblis about it after Iblis claims eminence over Adam through his own configuration. God says, What has prevented thee from prostrating unto that which I created with my two hands? Ye hands cannot mean power because of the dual, nor can it mean that one hand is blessing and the other is power, since that is true of every existent thing. There would be no eminence for Adam according to that interpretation, and this would contradict the fact that his words point out Adam's eminence. Hence, it was these two relationships, the relationship of Tanji and that of Tashbi, that turned their attentiveness towards the creation of the human being. The two aspects of Al-Haq as we scrutinized in another video, in truth describes the closeness of God to the servants in the one hand and the farness from other than himself in the other hand. In other words, in a Sufi psychological term, Tanji or incomparability depicts one hand of God as God's Jalalia or Majesty, generating corporate commonly translated as spiritual contraction, whereas Tashbi or similarity depicts the other as God's Jamalia, beauty, generating past translated as spiritual expansion. This thing is not without a peace. In the Quran it is said, and God contracts and expands, and unto him shall you be returned. God is referred to as contractor, al qabit and expander, al pasit two divine names that are partly based on that verse. The former connotes majesty and the latter beauty, and the combination of them is Kamalia, perfectness, which is used to have created Adam. Shortly, Adam was the perfectness or the manifestation of the Kamalia itself. All of this is relevant to the kind of relationship that is thought to exist if the earth is God's handful. As is mentioned by the Quran, the earth altogether shall be his handful on the day of resurrection and the heavens shall be enfolded in his right hand. The literal meaning of the word implies that the earth is constrained and contracted. As a result, it is in awe by the names of majesty. Nevertheless, according to the same verse, the heavens are enfolded in his right hand and thus the right hand is, by definition, blessed. Therefore, since the right handful is to be the opposite of the left handful, it must be linked to the names of beauty, Jamalia. Here, it is not surprised that Ibn Arabi alludes to handfuls to the two words, that is the word of misery and the word of happiness. Put it simply, happiness is a characteristic of those who live in paradise, whereas misery is of those who reside in hell. Quote, God put the cosmos out as two handfuls. He puts two way stations into existence for them. He said, these are for the garden and it is no concern of mine. These are for the fire and it is no concern of mine. No protester protested to him at this point since nothing existed beside him. So everything is under the control of his names. One handful is under the names of his affliction and the other handful is under the names of his bounties. 
Notwithstanding that one handful of God seems to be his ruth, we have to swiftly bear in mind, as we pointed out here to full, from the Hadith, God's mercy precedes his ruth. And as the Quran itself reminds us that God's mercy encompasses all things, including ruth or affliction or punishment itself. Quote, he said, I cause my punishment to smite whomsoever I will, though my mercy encompasses all things. Additionally, with reference to anthropological and cosmological matter, Ibn Arabi underlines the significance of the two hands of God as follows. God described himself as the outward and the inward. He brought the cosmos into existence as a word of the unseen and a word of the visible, so that we might perceive the inward through our unseen dimension and the outward through our physical dimension. He described himself through good pleasure and ruth, so he brought the cosmos into existence possessing fear and hope. We fear his wrath and we hope for his good pleasure. He described himself as beautiful and possessing majesty. So he brought us into existence having awe and intimacy. And so it goes with everything which is attributed to him and by which he is named. God called these two attributes the two hands through which he turned toward creating the perfect human being who brings together the realities and individuals of the cosmos. God puts his two hands together in Adam only to give him eminence. That's why he said to Iblis, What has prevented thee from prostrating unto that which I created with my two hands? This refers only to the fact that he brings together the two forms, the form of the cosmos and the form of Al-Haq. And these are the two hands of Al-Haq. To sum up, psychologically speaking, the two hands of God are always felt by human being because we are within the condition between awe and intimacy, between fear and hope, between the two words, the words of misery and the words of happiness, between the two sides of God's names, his names of majesty and his names of beauty. Since we are atoms that were created by the two hands of Al-Haq, you can spot this small channel monetarily in my PayPal and the link is on this description. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.